Hey everybody, fun science video for you. I, I'm gonna revert to my childhood for a second. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me when I was a kid. So when I was a kid in social studies, I had a teacher who was teaching me about all the lines on the earth, like, you know, the prime meridian, the North Pole, the equator, uh, the uh, Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn. And we're learning about all these lines. And, uh, and, and most of the lines made sense to me. So like the equator, you know, here's the equator. And I learned in social studies class that the equator was zero degrees. And I, that made sense, you know, and I learned that the poles, everybody probably can remember this. The poles are what? Well, yeah, the poles are both 90. So like, you know, you, you look there, you know, they're 90 from the equator. That, that made sense to me. And then I remember though, like, I remember like, it always drove me nuts trying to learn the difference between latitude and longitude. By the way, here was my trick. It's a silly trick, but the longitude lines all are the same length, and they're all long. The only line on the globe that's the same length as the longitude lines is the equator. It's the only one the same. All the other latitude lines are shorter, and that's how I remember that the long lines went this way, up and down, the long lines, the longitude lines went up and down, but they measured east-west. And then the latitude lines ran east-west, but measured north-south. And so that's how I used to remember that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's how I remembered it. But the other thing that used to drive me crazy, I remember asking my social studies teacher at the time, like, what's the deal with the traffic of cancer? Like, why is it not at like 30 or six? Why did they pick this random stupid spot for the traffic of cancer and the traffic of Capricorn? Why did they pick such a strange latitude and it didn't make any sense to me and my teacher i remember my teacher gave me a very unfulfilling answer it was just learn it that's what it is and that's just really unfulfilling like it's it didn't help me and it was very frustrating but i realize now that the reason that they said that is probably because they didn't know they probably didn't know what it was and so i don't have any ill you know, feelings toward that person but sometimes in life we learn things and it helps us understand. So this, by the way, if you ever were frustrated with why is the traffic of cancer at the latitude it is, maybe this will help you with that understanding. So what I'm gonna do is I want you to imagine right here, and I'm gonna turn the lights off to make this easier to see in just a second, but I've got a light bulb that if the earth were truly straight up and down, okay, and I've got the light bulb over here and I've got it kind of elevated so that where would the light bulb hit most directly? So while I go turn off the lights, you think about that a little bit. You think about that a little bit. Where would, if I turn on this light bulb, where's the rays gonna hit most directly if the earth is straight up and down? Well, as you can see, if the earth is straight up and down, the most direct rays are right here. The, the sun is hitting this part because it sticks out the furthest. And because of that, it's gonna get the most direct rays. They're, they're, they're going right there. And so if the earth truly were straight up and down like this, all right, then the entire time that we were orbiting the sun, then the angle in the sky would always be the highest at the equator all year round, all year round. And for the people, by the way, who say that the earth is flat, <laughs> uh, then the angle would be at 90 degrees for the entire planet all year, which is kind of stupid because if you just measure shadows, that's not the case. So if the shadow lengths on the earth are changing, which they do, then it really can't be, uh, first of all, the earth can't be straight up and down like this because if it stayed straight up and down, then the equator would always get 90 degrees every day and the equator doesn't get a 90 degree sun every day. It, it just doesn't. If you measure shadows at the equator, that doesn't happen. So a straight up and down earth can't make sense and a flat earth are both out the door. They're both out the door. So in class, if you if the camera kind of changes its angle on me for a second, I've got to kind of think of how to do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of put your hand up, all right, your right hand up, and you're going to let it kind of flop to the right like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, but now it's backwards. So you got to put your right hand up, put it in front of your face and let it flop. And if you do that, okay, that pretty much right there is the angle that the earth is tilted at. It's tilted at uh, 23.5 degrees. And I also always never understood how the heck did they learn that? How, how did they learn that the earth was tilted at 23.5 degrees? That just seems like they knew that before we ever went to space. 
So how, how the heck did they know that? All right, so here's how they know that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this globe at 23 and a half degrees, okay? So right now, if you look at my hand, it's tilted and I've pretty much maxed, I've pretty much maxed the axis, okay? That is a 23 and a half degree tilt. Now, what's amazing right now is that the light bulb is now coming across here right now and it's hitting right now that dotted line right there. And if it's hitting that dotted line right there, that is not on one of the solid lines. That's like between. So this is 10, 20, 30. It's, so it's more than 20, it's less than 30. It looks like it's at about 23. Oh wait, no, it's at 23.5 degrees south. Holy cow, that's the Tropic of Capricorn. So right now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but right now, the Southern Hemisphere is getting more direct rays and the Northern Hemisphere is getting less direct rays. And so it's winter up here and it's summer down here. And if you were lucky enough to be at the Tropic of Capricorn on December 21st or 22nd, depending on if it's a leap year or not, if you are at the Tropic of Capricorn on December 21st at noon, the sun would be right above your head and you would not have a shadow. So one day a year, if you live on the Tropic of Capricorn, you get a 90 degree angle right above your head. By the way, the angle of the sun in the Northern Hemisphere would be very not even close right now to a high angle. It would be a very low angle in the sky. And so, this is what happens if you actually measure shadows, you would actually see that. And by the way, this is known as a solstice for the Southern Hemisphere. This is their summer solstice, all right? Because it's their longest day, because the sun gets the highest in the sky at 23.5 degrees south, which is why the Tropic of Capricorn is not at 30. It's not at 15, it's not at 60, it's at 23.5 because of this because that's where the rays hit directly, which is so incredibly cool if you think about it. Now, just try to help you out with another thing. So as the earth is kind of going around, okay, I'm going to, the earth actually orbits the sun in a, a, a different thing, but for the video, I'm just gonna bring it around here so you can see. This would be at a point in time where the tilt doesn't really matter, okay? See, now the tilt is over here in the northern hemisphere and the tilt's down here and so right now, the tilt of the earth doesn't matter. And so what's happening is the direct rays are hitting the equator. So this is when both the northern and the southern hemisphere right now are actually getting the same amount of light. And both of them would get about 12 hours of light a day. This is, oh, wait, that's probably why it's called an equinox. So we're gonna move this around here. But that equinox means equal day and equal night. And during the equinox, the rays are most direct. The rays are most direct in an equinox at the equator, okay? And so now we bring us to, now we've got it tilted again. There's that 23.5 degree tilt. Now it looks like the Northern hemisphere is tipped toward the sun and my angle's slightly off. I think I have it a little bit more than 23.5. So we're gonna fix that. And I'm gonna rotate this a little bit counterclockwise. You notice how, look, here's, here's the earth. Sun's rising in the east coast, setting in the west coast. I'm spinning this globe counterclockwise. That's, <laughs> This is how they know that the earth actually rotates counterclockwise. Let me try to get that tilt back. And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit so that you can see the ocean. And now if we look across here, we come across, oh my gosh, I don't know if this camera can get that, but that says Tropic of Cancer. So when the Northern Hemisphere is tipped toward the sun, it's summer solstice in the north on June 21st. June 21st. The sun's rays hit the most direct at the Tropic of Cancer. And by the way, when I was a kid, the way I remembered that the Cancer was north and the Capricorn was south was 
this is a little bit morbid, but it's how I remembered it, that everybody I knew that had died from cancer, which I unfortunately had several relatives who had died from cancer when I was younger, and it was very hard on me, but every relative I had who had died from cancer lived in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's how I remembered that the Tropic of Cancer was in the Northern Hemisphere. By the way, that doesn't mean that people in the Southern Hemisphere don't get cancer, they do. All right, unfortunately, cancer is a horrible thing that's everywhere. But what's amazing right now is that the rays are most direct at the Tropic of Cancer, which is at 23.5 degrees north. So this is how they determined the tilt of the earth before anybody ever went to space, okay? So before anybody, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights back on real quick. But before anybody ever went to space, before anybody ever went to space, they learned this by measuring shadows. And when you measure shadows, I live right now in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio never gets a 90 degree sun. But it, wouldn't it be cool if you lived on the Tropic Cancer? And you could take out and make a TikTok video or you could make some kind of whatever platform everybody's using now. And you could watch and say, it's 1156, look how short my shadow is. It's 1157, look how short my shadow. But at noon you could say, look, my shadow is gone. How cool would that be? But you know what? In Dayton, Ohio, I don't ever get that opportunity, but if you lived at the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Capricorn or any place in between them, any place in between them, they get two 90 degree shadows a year. So the equator, the people who live at the equator, they get two 90 degrees, which means there's two times a year where they have no shadow at noon. Man, I hope for their sake, it's a sunny day at noon on the days that they have no shadow. Otherwise, what fun would that be? But if you have anybody in your life who starts to say to you, the earth isn't really tilted on its axis, have them explain then why the angles in the sky of the sun change. Because if the angles of the sun change, which they do, and if the shadow lengths change, which they do, then a straight up and down earth cannot explain it. Also, if you meet somebody who says that the earth is flat, just say, well, when's the last time you actually measured shadows for an entire year? And if they measure shadows for a high entire year, one thing that nobody who's a flat earth person can explain is why the seasons are flipped in December and June. If I lived in Australia in June, they are having winter. And in Ohio, I am having summer. And it, it's vice versa. In Australia in December, they're having summer. And in Ohio, I'm having winter. You cannot explain that with a flat earth. It's impossible. You cannot do it. You also cannot explain the shadow lengths differing if the earth isn't tilting on its axis. And you also can't explain no shadow at the Tropic of Cancer and no shadow at the Tropic of Capricorn if the earth isn't tilted at 23.5 degrees. If you've ever wondered, why is the Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degrees north? You now have had a eureka moment. Have a great day. Science is awesome.